Hello, it's Dimension, and welcome back to more Pokemon Leaf Green. So, there's no flashbacks at the start of this episode, and my reason for that is, well, last episode, quick reminder what we did. We went back to Lavender Town, and I was accompanied by Whoopstick and Creepix, so it was kind of a crazy commentary. And we went down all these routes. But after we did that, I didn't save the game, so. Here I am! Um, I did go back and redo some stuff, for example, I renamed, um, Balos into Balrog. And, all the training is still here, so that's fine. Anyway, that wasn't too important, because the only reason I really recorded those routes was to show them off as extras, people who were wondering what they were like. And in this episode, we'll be taking on the future city Pokemon gym, the Urkoga, Poison's Ninja Master. But before we go in there, there's an item I want to grab from another city. And unfortunately, there's no underground passageway we can take from here. Thankfully, now Charizard's a big dragon, we can just fly there. I'm not, really, I'm not gonna be showing off the entirety of um, Saffron City now, because it's kinda big. I'm probably gonna do that next episode, but in this house right here, this is Mr. Psychic's house. Wait, don't say a word. You wanted this. So, this creepy guy will give you TM29, which is Psychic. I guess since I knew what it was before he knew, I'm psychic as well. The reason I came here to pick this up is because I want to teach this to my XQ, who still doesn't have a nickname. Goddamn internet. Since the next gym is filled with poison type Pokemon and psychic is super effective on poison, I think XQ here could benefit from having a stronger psychic type move than confusion. So let's shove a TM on a bunch of eggs. Hey, it matches your color. And boom, psychic. So that should be helpful. Ah, uh, wrong city. I meant to fly back to Future City, but Vermilion City is always down. I'm gonna get those two mixed up a lot. Alright, let's do this properly this time. Light Fuchsia City. Okay. So now Execute has Psychic. Let's put him up at the front of our party and enter this gym. Akanai also has Dig, and Dig is a ground type move, which is also super effective on poison type, so that might be useful later on. Okay. Let's see what Clyde has to say. Yo, champ in the making. Fuchsia Gym is a tricked up place. It's riddled with invisible walls. Togo might appear close, but he's blocked off. We have to find gaps in the walls to reach him. Future City Pokemon Gym. Leader Koga. Winning trainers. Gary. God damn that, Gary. So as Clyde, they will tell you, there are invisible walls, or walls around this gym. The trick is, they're not actually invisible. If you squint, you might be able to see little white lines. And those white lines will show you where the walls are. So for example, all across the top here, there's white lines. There's free going up here, and then they go across another free. So the walls aren't completely invisible. As in a Pokemon, you'll be seeing in this gym. This gym is specialized in poison type Pokemon, so expect a lot of Grimers, um, Coughings, Arbox, that kind of thing. Except Juggler Nate. No, Juggler Nate is the rebel of the group, but for some reason, he just had to have a drowsy. Pretty sure there's also a guy in this gym who has a sand, a sand slash, which is out of place, but okay then. So now, set your drowser on fire for it, defying the laws of this Pokemon gym's type. And a Kadabra, you have nothing poison on your team at all. Why are you in this gym? Why did they accept you into this gym? What does it take to become a poison gym trainer? After two psychic type Pokemon, this makes no sense to me. Ah, yeah, to use Reflect. Reflect is one of those moves all like light screen. When a Pokemon uses it, it'll raise the entire team's physical defense for a certain number of turns. Um. But apparently it didn't save Kadabra, because wow, that was an interesting body slam. 
I think I saw the health bar like freeze halfway, but maybe it's just me. I'll see it on recording. So yes, you can see here the invisible wall goes up here. So there's no really reason to fight that guy aside from experience, but I want to show off what the Pokemon stream like. Um, maybe this guy will actually have some poison type Pokemon I can show off. Yes, that would be nice. Nope, he has a hit now. What is it with all the psychic types in this gym? I was promised poison. They gave me psychic. Well, there's no comment. That was the evolved form of Drowsy. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's also a really creepy Pokemon. Why? Well, we'll be finding out about that a bit later. And, yeah, Body Slam has a chance of paralysis. I actually forgot about that. Yeah, I guess if Balrog sat on you, you'd probably get paralyzed from that. Okay. Do you have a Poison-type Pokemon? Let's go on a scavenger hunt for Poison-type Pokemon in a Poison-type gym. That's a good use of our time. Juggler Kirk. Nope, just more drowsies. Is it with this place? Do you have anything poison on? Does anyone in this gym have anything poison? Oh, you're smart. Thankfully, Balrog has immunity, which prevents us from. I think that prevents us from being poisoned. So, drowsy trying to find a loophole to be in this gym didn't work. Another drowsy? This guy probably has four drowsies. So I'm probably just gonna cut the rest of this fight out. Whoa, time skip. Okay, so basically when I paused the video to cut out this guy's fight, um, 12 hours have passed since then. Yeah, okay, so when I first started recording the first half of this episode that you're watching right now, it was early morning, I'd just woken up and I was tired, so that's probably why my voice sounded a little bit, um, weird. But basically, the second I paused the video to cut out this guy's fight, a bunch of people came home and started making a lot of noise. So I'd save my game in this spot right now and resume recording later. And in those 12 hours that I was gone, my room was moved around. Basically, um, I'm gonna start playing the game while talking about this. The way my um, desk was, was before was sort of pushed up against an awkward wall in a sort of awkward position. So my desk was moved in front of win in front of two windows. So if there's any like noticeable difference in the way I sound right now, if there's an echo, then that's the reason for that. More importantly, though, hey, look, an actual poison type in this gym. You didn't think we'd be seeing that in this episode, did you? No. Okay. So this gives me a chance to show off executes toxic. I don't know why I've been seeing so many psychic types so far. This is a poison type gym. How hard is it just to bring in poison type Pokemon? It's effective for the trainers because they actually get what they're promised. And hey, look, this is the dude with the sand slash. And if Execute had any grass type moves, that would be perfect, but he doesn't, so. Curl hasn't seen the action in a while anyway, so this might benefit him. Again, with the Sand Slash. Poison type or er, ground type Pokemon, not poison type Pokemon. Ground and Psychic are the types that poison are weak to. Why are they in a poison type? Nah, never mind. And another Arbok. Arbok, I'm pretty sure I've explained before. Arbok's the evolved form of Ekans. Small snake turns into big snake. And I'm also pretty sure I mentioned this before, but Ekans' name backwards is Snake, and Arbok's name backwards is Cobra. They're hilarious, aren't they? I'm surprised Execute didn't get any more cracked from being bitten by a massive snake just then, but I don't question it. Anything to keep my dozen of eggs alive, I think. Okay. Thankfully, since all Pokemon we found that fight were fully evolved, got quite a lot of experience out of that. 
probably gonna want to heal up Execute's Paralysis, because that'll get annoying in some upcoming fights. Okay, other things to talk about, other things to talk about. Um, hmm. The walls in this gym are a really pathetic excuse for a gym puzzle, we can talk about that. The famed invisible walls of Fusa City Gym. They're not invisible. You can see the little white lines. I mean, at least you tried. You put good effort into it, but it just didn't work. What do you have? No sand slash. That means back out to Corolla. I'm sorry, Excute. You'll be a real grass type one day. I just need to get more moves for you. Um, yeah, Balrog's name reminded me of something. This is completely off topic, but I'm just finding stuff to talk about anyway. So, Balrog is from Cave Story. And I'm a little bit of a weird gamer. I don't know what it's about me in games, but I don't usually often play or own the physical copy of a game. A lot of the games I play, even if I do own a physical copy, I usually play on emulators because it's convenient to have options such as save stating and speed ups. But there's some games that are just, it's usually novelty things, things that are off shelves and really old games that are rare. Some games I really do like having a physical copy for. Now, I'm a huge cave story nerd, in case you haven't guessed from my first let's play. Um, I played Cave Story, or the original version of Cave Story, and I absolutely fell in love with it. The soundtrack, the storyline, all that good stuff. It really reminded me of things like Metroid and Castlevania, since that basically was the inspiration for it. And I just overall loved the game. So of course I downloaded it from the eShop on all my other um, DS's and on a bunch of other computers. But um, as I mentioned at the start of the Cave Story Let's Play, Cave Story actually does have a 3DS remake, Cave Story 3D. And it was released, I think, in 2011, but it was taken off shelves the exact same year, so they start producing physical copies of it. And, being the Cave Story nerd I am, of course I wanted to get my hands on a physical copy of Cave Story 3D, box and all, in 2014, which isn't is that easy. So I went on Amazon and eBay to try and find one, and I'm not... I'm not even kidding about this, the cheapest one I could find for an actual physical copy, like fully boxed with the instruction manuals and the, um, cartridge. 70 pounds, of course I'm British, but that basically equals into about 70 dollars, maybe even 100 dollars, I'm not really sure how the um, difference is there. But that's a crazy amount of money to pay for a game, like a 3DS game that used to be maybe 5 dollars. So of course I bought it. And I now own a physical copy of Cave Story 3D, and I regret nothing. Now of course you might be wondering why Let's Play the original and not actually um, Let's Play the 3D version. Well, I don't have the things I need to record from 3DS. Because of course if I did I'd probably be Let's Playing um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire when they came out this November. And that's still in the future, I might have time. I'm also really looking forward to the Hone remakes. I don't actually know if I've talked about them, but yay, Hone confirmed. The gameplay footage looks, from what we've seen at least with screenshots, it looks kind of weird to me. It's sort of like they took a step down from the graphics of X and Y. Okay. A lot of experience from that hymn though. And that's all the trainers in this gym. Now we can just go around here, and hey look, Koga. So of course, Koga specializes in poison type Pokemon, so bring in some psychic types and some ground types. Just fair warning here before we start the fight, ground type Pokemon aren't going to help you out for the majority of this fight, because well, 3 out of 4 of Koga's team are completely immune to ground type moves, despite being poison type, which is kind of awkward. Um, let me see if I can get this over. Nope. Herp, derp, there we go. I have all my move sets and stuff because I'm totally prepared on the laptop that's right next to me. And let me heal up. Uh, Execute's poison here. Or not poison, browse, sorry. Okay, let's fight a ninja. Faha! A mere child like you dares to challenge me? The very idea makes me shiver with mirth. Very well. I shall now show you true terror as a ninja master. Poison brings steady doom. Sleep renders foes helpless. Despair to the creeping horror of poison type Pokemon. So it's time to fight the 15 million Pokemon Leaf Green, which is Koga. He's a ninja. Koga's first Pokemon here is Coughingle, 37, pure poison type. The ability to levitate with the moves Self Destruct, Sludge, Smokescreen, and Toxic. We've seen a lot of Coughings around from the Cycling Road and the bikers in general. 
Free standard poison type Pokemon. Of course, it does have the ability to levitate, which neglects or uh, negates one of its two weaknesses, which is ground. Hit with hard psychic type move, though, and it goes down without much trouble. Okay. Coming on next is arguably his most annoying Pokemon, which is his muck. Let's do this. Muckle 39, pure poison type with the ability Sticky Hole with moves Minimize, Sludge, Ast Armor, and Toxic. Unlike Coughing, which has really good physical defense, Muck has really good special defense, so that kind of renders Psychic useless. And unfortunately for me, this Muck has the move Minimize, which we saw a little bit in the fur gym battle with the Hunt Surgeon's Raichu. But Minimize will basically make your accuracy raise the opponent's accuracy. Oh, it also has Ast Armor, which raises its physical defense, which kind of helps it out since it doesn't really have that um, good of physical defense. Yeah, Minimize will raise up its accuracy, so all of your moves will be missing. Then Acid Armor will make it so your physical moves aren't going to be doing that much damage, and then its already outstanding special attack will make it so it doesn't take much damage from those time moves. Yeah, needless to say, this is a really annoying muck. This is probably Koga's most difficult Pokemon to take out. If you can take this thing out, you'll be, you're going to be fine for the rest of the fight. And obviously, on my right, you Dynamo, I have Shockwave in case... For example, right here, it has too many minimizes up and just nothing's gonna hit it. So, switching him in right now would probably be a smart idea. Unfortunately, this thing is a very hard hitter. We also know the random level spike. A lot of the Pokemon we've been seeing this gym have been around level 35, 34. Then suddenly, boom, Koga's Pokemon are up in the um, high 30s and even some low 40s. Alright, Muck, you have way too many uh, minimizes up. My best bet here is to try and burn it with Flamethrower, I guess. Because that would help out a lot. Oh, and you just had to poison me. I do have a lot of items prepared for this. I have a lot of healing items, and I even have some revives if I need to start using those. Okay, got a Flamethrower off. I'm not really sure I'd be burning this thing. It's like a pile of goop, unless it's made out of oil or something. Yeah, ouch, this thing hurts. Um, well, crap. okay, maybe if I can get to sleep with Balrog, that'll help. I guess Yawn would probably be a good idea. Okay, he's using a high potion. I don't actually know if we've seen this yet. But in an instance where a gym leader's Pokemon is at low health, they can actually heal up their Pokemon using items. Thankfully, I managed to hit with that Yawn, so Muck will be going to sleep next turn, which is perfect. So now, hopefully, Execute Psychic is probably going to be doing more now than Aquanite's Dig would be doing. Since it got up the Acid Armor, and damn it, you just have to get one more Minimize in before falling asleep, didn't you? Okay. Now you're asleep, now might be a good time to try and get Leech Seed up, because that's probably going to help guarantee a victory here. Eh, uh -huh. This is a very annoying fight, I'll give him that much. And of course, Execute is weak to Poison type moves, so it's kind of risky to have him in here anyway. There we go, go off for Leech Seed. Leech Seed, I don't have... I haven't actually used it yet, but Leech Seed will constantly sap the other opposing Pokemon's hit points every turn. So basically, they lose some, then I heal some. Very convenient. Okay, now, do I want this thing paralyzed or sleep? Sleep makes it completely useless in fight, so probably that's going to be a better idea. There's no way for him to get rid of the Leech Seed unless he switches out, which will also get rid of all of his minimizes. Which is actually looking like a better thing right now. Okay. Hopefully the Yon will hit. He has six minimizes up. This is crazy. That is way too much. A How are you hitting Balrog? I am proud of you. That is way too much accuracy for any Pokemon to have ever. Such a disgrace. Okay. So you'll be going back to sleep next turn. Which gives me a chance to try and get more psychics on you. Oh, unless that KOs me, please don't KO. Okay, thank god. 
Don't poison, thank you. Yeah, you're definitely putting up a lot more of a fight than the other gym leaders have been recently. Okay, can I connect with this psychic? That would help. I have one PP left for psychic, so. This misses, I'm probably gonna have to use a revive on Dynamo to get him back and then start spamming shockwaves. And, yep, it missed. Big surprise there. It's so low on health though. If I can just hit it with one surf, I guess. Yeah. This is a very annoying muck. Please don't heal, please don't heal, please don't heal, thank you. Okay, now he's probably definitely gonna heal. Yep, 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 there it is. Ah, uh, you passed. I really hate this muck. This is probably the worst Pokemon on this team. And it woke up. I think I had, I had to sleep for the maximum of five turns there, so that was a good, good, good luck streak right then. Now if it would just be cooperative and die. Yeah, yeah, wash away the goop, please. You don't need any more accuracy, you don't need any more defense, just die. Stupid pile of goop. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's actually ran himself out of healing items, which is ridiculous. And hopefully, I should have him next turn if he doesn't randomly make a hyper potion appear out of thin air. Or if Muck doesn't just miraculously hang on one hit point left. Quick attack? No. Okay, whatever. That was kind of a cheap way to win against Muck, but Muck is gone. Goodbye, you freaking annoying pest. I think that thing actually managed to sweep for most of my team, which is really inconvenient. I don't remember this gym being so hard. Okay. Execute still alive, but out of PP, so I can use Nephron up. It's time for a second coughing. It's the exact same as the first one. Spoilers. Coughing level 37, pure poison type, the ability to levitate with moves, self-destruct, sludge, smoke tree, and toxic. It's an exact replica of the first one. Big surprise. And I need Nether on Psychic right now. And it's using Toxic. Toxic is Koga's signature move, in case you haven't guessed by now, every one of those Pokemon has it. Toxic will poison you, but it's not normal poison, it's badly poisoned. And what badly poisoned is, is every time you take damage from poison each turn, the damage you take will be constantly keep on increasing. I think it goes from 5 up to 10, up to 20, up to 30, up to 40, etc. Well, that's the second coughing down, and now it's time for a spotlight Pokemon, which is Weezing. Weezing, level 43, pure poison type, with the ability to levitate with the moves Tackle, Sludge, Smoke Screen, and Toxic. Weezing is the ball form of coughing, and ironically enough, this thing is actually way easier than Muck was. I say that as it knocks me out, but it is a lot easier than Muck. Now, why he has Tackle on this thing, I have no idea. It's a really weak move on a really powerful Pokemon, but I guess it makes up for it with how high of a level this thing is. If I can get to sleep and then use um, Surf on it, that would be nice. And Dupara, good job with not missing with Yawn. Alright. Should be going to sleep next turn, so let's do something weird and manage to KO Corolla here. Uh, which it just did, of course. Just, yeah, just great. I'm actually gonna have to revive someone. This has been a horrible gym fight. This is probably the worst one I've had on camera. But I'm gonna get the badge anyway. I've, I've had to re-record this two times because of audio issues. Just my luck for moving position, I guess, but whatever. This positioning of the room is a lot more beneficial for doing stuff involving Hack and Slash. Which still hasn't been updated yet. A lot of the other members are very lazy. And you, got, you have a full heal? That's just a weird and 
unnecessary item for you to have. Why do you have a full heal? And why didn't you use it on Muck earlier? Like, I guess I'm not complaining because I killed Muck somehow, but... Ugh. And yeah, there's Weezing showing off its incredibly high physical defense. And why is it using Tackle? That's just so weird. Okay, it's obviously not going to be using how many poison type moves since Aconite four times resists them, so I have a safe switch in here to execute. And hopefully I'm outspeeding this thing. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, no, no. Alright, whatever. Aconite should be able to speed this thing, get in some more frashes, and that should be enough to take it out. There we go. That was a very long, annoying, and drawn-out gym fight, but whatever, I won. So we beat Koga. Hmm, feel proven your worth. And he gives us a soul badge, which is a really weird name for a poison gym badge. Shouldn't have been called something like the Venom Badge. I don't know. And it gives us TMO6, which is obviously going to be Toxic. I explained it already in the battle, but Toxic will poison the enemy Pokemon with Badly Poisoned, meaning the damage it takes from Toxic each turn will keep increasing. It's pretty good TM, and I'm pretty sure every Pokemon in the game can learn it, so... I'm definitely going to be teaching that something. Quickly check the statues before we leave. Wing trainers, Gary and Tama. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Pretty sure this episode's probably gonna be nearly half an hour long because of how long that gym fight took, and also the fact I had to take a really long break in the middle of it. But, there we go. We did some progress in this episode. We got the fifth gym badge of the game, the soul badge. Okay. So next on Pokemon Leaf Green, we're probably gonna be exploring Saffron City, which we, since we haven't done that yet. So I'll see you guys then.